I'm Luis Rodriguez, and my car is a Scorp Ion. The Scorp Ion is basically a concept car for the road. I wanted to create something that was so aesthetically insane that you would see it and it would be more of an enigma than a statement. It wouldn't just tell you something, it would just drop questions into your mind like who created this, where did it come from, and why? You know, and it's almost like, was it aliens? I don't know. <laughs> but I just wanted to make something that looked like it, it would almost fit in a cyberpunk reality. Something that hasn't truly arrived yet, but one day we might be able to see cars like this. And maybe not. Who knows? Maybe somewhere in uh, the winds of your imagination you might pick up on something like this. The Scorpion stemmed from my desire to create something that inspired me, which is sci-fi movies from the 80s like Blade Runner and Akira. You know, movies that ultimately affected the way that, that I perceived what the future would be like. You know, this neon-lit cyberpunk, you know, reality. So... Went out there and I was like, all right, how do I create this? And I just remember uh, just starting with some colored pencils. I grabbed a piece of paper and I uh, started a couple sketches. Now, I'm not the best artist in the world, but I do try. And uh, I, I did start, you know, kind of building on a shape. And I had my son sit next to me drawing what he thought what a cool car would be like for, uh, for a four-year-old. And I'm sitting there drawing what I would think would be a cool car for, uh, for me, you know? <laughs> And it's tough to say who had a better design. <laughs> but, uh, it, you know, and then going from there, uh, the, the, the sketches, the artwork eventually led to metal and welding and grinder to body and ultimately creating the Scorpion. But, uh, you know, it all started from a couple donor cars. It wasn't just one. There was a multitude of ones. You know, I had to basically take whatever I could find and make it fit in a platform that would exemplify, you know, a futuristic car, you know, or what could fit in order so it would adapt to uh, the parameters and the requirements that I needed for the Scorpion. You know, I went with the Nissan 300ZX hubs and brakes in the front to keep the car lightweight because I wanted to push the boundaries of, of the car being light. I wanted to make sure that it was going to be ultra lightweight, which is why I also went with the carbon fiber body this time, you know. Um, it's a chromoly two frame chassis again. And then I bonded styrofoam to that body. And then I hand sculpted it. And kept, kept sculpting it and sculpting it until it had a nice shape. And once I was happy with the shape, started laying carbon fiber, learning how, how to work that process. You know, heating it up with epoxy, well, laying epoxy and then heating it up with the heat gun, allowing the viscosity of the epoxy to kind of permeate the carbon fiber, you know, shaping it, sanding it, adding more carbon fiber in certain locations until I was kind of happy with the shape. And I mean, it wasn't perfect, but I had to continue to keep working at it and working at it until I was happy with something that was aesthetically pleasing for me. Uh, for the donor cars, you know, I went with the Nissan 300ZX subframe in the rear because I like the geometry. I like the way the car hooks and how it handles at speed. Uh, the, the power is put to the ground by a Subaru STI six-speed transmission. I like using that because it's a very, it's a very solid transaxle once it's built properly. Um, I mated that to uh, a Mitsubishi 4G63, which is from a 1990 GSX. Now, this is kind of cool. I got it for a two-for-one deal on Marketplace. I was uh, scrolling, looking for a donor motor, and the guy had two. He was propping up his workbench, one on each side. And I was able to use one for mock-up, and I took the other motor, and I sent it to, uh, to the machine shop to put the bearings in. I get it back. I was able to put all the race parts in it you know, slap it together, you know, I got, got the whole thing timed up properly. And once that was set and ready on the engine stand, I dropped that in and start working on all the other fabrication bits and portions, all the tubing and uh, hoses and piping that, that the car needed. Um, once I was done with the actual body, you know, I started focusing on the interior, working on the interior, sculpting it again with the styrofoam, shaping it perfectly till it was it was the exact feel that I was looking for, you know, that, that, that sensation that it's something different, something crazy, you know. Um, for, the, for the suspension in the front, you know, I wanted to go kind of nutty as well. And in order to achieve that, that kind of bipod feel, that almost hovercraft in the future is about to take off, some different form of propulsion, I really wanted to, to push forward the, the suspension on the front using a trailing arm design inspired from... Uh, and 
the 50s Citron 2CV, where it had a trailing arm that actually went around the motor. And if you ever look at the, the, the frame separated from the actual body, you can see that the trailing arms actually go around the engine. So what I wanted to do was the same thing on the front, allowing it to have that shape that's almost like the devil's pitchfork going in, you know, and really gives it that, that, that real alien kind of vibe to it. Now, I didn't just want to use some outdated suspension. I kind of wanted to improve upon that, which is why it's actually, it was modified to a double trailing arm to give it that extra stability. And I mean, sounds kind of crazy engineering your own suspension and it was, but um, it, it took more than just building it once. It took multiple attempts before it was perfect. You know, I, I had to create uh, double lateral stability bars. I had to create um, double, you know, uh, vertical st stability bars. It was all to make sure that the geometry and suspension stayed perfect when handling and taking a turn and under acceleration which is, I gotta say, very tricky, but it worked out nice. The paint for the Scorpion was kind of interesting. I really wanted to make it pop, so I made sure it was two colors that were very different, but flowed together. I knew the glass was gonna be blue, so I knew the paint had to be white with almost a hue of blue. So I went with the Arctic white, um, I went and primed the body, and then I painted it in-house. I used a low temperature paint and clear coat just to make sure that it would cure. Um, and I, I use a flattening agent because I didn't want it bright, you know, I didn't want it to gloss. I wanted it to just look clean, you know, very basic and simple, but there was something beautiful in that simplicity as a clash with the blue of the glass. And then the white with the blue looked great, and I knew I wanted to make it pop even more, so I gave it almost a tribal stripe going across it. And that was actually inspired by uh, one of my favorite movies is District 9. If you look at one of the plasma rifles on there, um, the one with all the tubes on it has a very sharp angular paint job to it. It's very alien, it's very different. You know, typically with in the car world, you'll see, you know, stripes, but they flow just in one direction or they'll flow with the body of the car. With this, I wanted to make sure that it would break up the lines of the car. So I made sure I did it and I taped it off in ways that it would be the most striking, yet look the most alien and realistic when you look at the car. And even though it contrasts the direction of the vehicle, uh, when you look at it, it actually does flow with the car. It came out nice. If the Scorp Ion was turned into a Hot Wheels car, it would mean the world to me. You know, the reason why I built this car, the last year and a half, blood, sweat, and tears, was to create something that inspired the next generation of builders. You know, what better way to get out there than to be built into a toy that kids can see on a shelf, pick it up and look at it, and just be like, you know what? This is the benchmark. This is what a cool car is supposed to be. Wait till you see what I can build. And that's what I want to see. I want people to see this is what I can do. Now, let, now show me what you can do. And that, I think, means more to me than anything else. You know, it's... It's more than just a car. You look at this car and it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, but um, the car itself is me. It's a part of me that now is rolling living art. And what better way to share that than in an international platform where kids around the world can say, wow, what the hell is this? <laughs> and once they begin to understand and go beyond the fact that it's more than just you know, a car, it's an idea. And what is that idea? It's the belief in yourself to create something the world has never seen before. And if one man can do it, so can I. And if I have that shot of being able to share that vision, and that feeling, there's nothing more that would make me happier. This is where you can see the Citron 2CV inspired uh, front trailing double A arm design. 
you can see the huge space between the two front articulating fenders. The hoses that I use to cool the front brake calipers that are mounted the way the old Auburn Roadsters are. You can see some of the decals. They're, they're decals, but there's something special about them. They do give the car a lot of flavor. The MK2 4BT500 is uh, designates Mark II. This is the second car I built from scratch. Uh, 4BT4 four Banger Turbo, and it's got entry level 500 horses was the original goal, but the car's at 510. As for the decals, to liven it up and give it that futuristic feel, you can see it's got, uh, in Japanese, it's, it's caution warning. And uh, then there's danger ion blast field with uh, the D3T ion particle accelerator to give you that sensation that something's going on. Uh, the, the front decal, if you look at it, it's tiny, but I love this one because it's so, so cool. It says caution ion radiation emitted in blast thrust class delta three particle accelerator emissions. It's kind of cool. As for uh, the little kind of jet rocket nozzles, I wanted something to give it some flavor, but I wanted something simple. So what I actually use, if you look close enough, it's actually a rattle can spray paint tops that I just cut in half, mounted there, and then I just use a certain amount of airbrushing in order to scorch the sides to give it that sensation that there's actual, you know, ignition or some kind of point of uh, propulsion coming out of there. And once you uh, turn on the lights, you can see that whole area light up at night. the shape of the car the flow is what I love just starts from the front and just kind of goes towards the back I mean some of the more basic decals I, it, it's basic uh, robot that I found that just looked really super interesting and then I, I uh, modified one decal to say got mech tech fusion and the whole point behind that is you know this is more than just a car it's almost like the next specification. It's mechanical and technical fusion coming together to create something more than what you're used to, more than something that's just off the shelf, you know, creating something that is truly art. And, and, and that's the question, what do you got? Are you modifying or are you building for something that's gonna mean more to you than anyone else? Flow going over the back. Of course, I love the rear fins to suck out the heat from the motor just the way it kind of flows with the whole shape of the car and the decals and just kind of goes outwards towards the rear ducktail wing now they're clear acrylic it just looks so so beautiful of course the scorp ion with the little atom symbol and uh, the experimental syndicate which i thought was kind of a cool interesting little little use of uh, words there don't really mean anything but it just kind of gives you the idea that something came together you know something more otherworldly to in order to create this thing of course the 4g 63 500 horses custom everything of course my muffler it's a uh, basic magnet flow three inch piping all the way to the turbo uh, which is reverse mounted towards the front. Um, sucks in air while you're going and it pushes it right out with a whole lot of power. Cooling is siphoned from underneath the car from all the high pressure, high flow air. Uh, there's double twin boom scoops inspired from the P-51 Mustang fighters. So there's one under the radiator here and one under the intercooler on the other side. Scoops it up, cools it off very efficiently and allows it to work since it's basically mid-engine. You know, it clearly can't get any air from the firewall, so <laughs> it's gotta suck it up from underneath. The mirrors were given to me from by a friend of mine. Uh, they're from uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think they are off the shelf from a, a GT race team for a Ferrari. Uh, they were carbon fiber from a 458 GT race car, but I don't remember the exact number or whatever. You get it. And of course, the devil's always in the details. Got my little parking sticker on here, which is uh, the Tyrell Corporation. More human than human. Of course, from one of the movies that inspired me, Blade Runner, which I absolutely adore.
You get that real sensation, that pitchfork vibe towards the front. She's sleek yet sinister. Something very beautiful about it. Here's one of the key features that I'm very proud of is actual flow of the car. You can see it flow right from the front fenders and over the wing and how that extends through the windshield up through the front and then just scoops down and then just goes ahead and goes all the way to the back and then wraps around the entire car. It's just, it's just an elegant flow and a sensation of movement that I absolutely adore about the car. Another cool feature, something I'm actually very happy with was uh, I used a 3 8 oil filter ratchet so I could get some motion um, with the muffler because I didn't want it to just be a muffler yes it looks cool but I wanted it to work and be aesthetically pleasing and give it that sensation that that this thing is definitely rocking something very special underneath the hood well, not a very big hood but there's something there <laughs> and uh, I, I went and I plumbed a drive cable all the way to the, the gas pedal so when you hit the gas pedal uh, it pulls that cable that's spring-loaded and will move the three portions of the oil filter wrench in order to open up the muffler tip. So it starts off circular, but then it, it opens up in an extending three-way pattern, which is absolutely fantastic. Everything on the car was designed for ease of maintenance. You know, there's nothing really super complicated to work on. If you gotta work on the engine, what do you do? You just flip one of these uh, drifter rubber bands off of here and flip it up towards the top and you got full access, which is fantastic. You know, if you have to swap plugs, change the oil, you know, rip the head off, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Um, everything's super easy, super accessible, even the timing belt, there's plenty of space. I mean, you got, you got loads of space to go ahead and fit whatever you have to in order to get everything off. One key feature of this car is the front articulating fenders. I wanted to give it a real sensation of movement while it was moving. So I figured, hey, why not find a way to mount the fenders so that they that way they flow while you're steering? So look. Yes, look at that. It's very cool, very mechanical, very different. Here's another cool feature is the siphoning system that I used um, a shop vac hose for in order to collect that high speed pressure air via scoop underneath and redirect it so it cools the back of the calibers off. Now for the interior, it always starts with the doors. It's how you get in. And I figured what's more futuristic? Setting the tone with DeLorean doors. It's future meets past. I love that retro futuristic feel. It's the reason why I went with super cool looking Porsche 914 seats from a 1971. Super ergonomic, tiny, but basic and comfortable and super lightweight. As for the dash, and you know, I said it before, I shaped the whole interior the same way I did the body. I used styrofoam, shaped it till it was perfect and then reinforced it with carbon fiber. And then I laid micro suede over it for the sides are plush carpet uh, just so it doesn't rub up against your elbow or anything like that. Everything's super spacey on the inside. I eliminated the transmission tunnel. I didn't want that going down through the body of the car. So that's the reason why I made the shifter on the left side. It brings you a little tighter towards the passenger, but that's fine with me. If you're riding with that person, you should like that person. So get comfortable. For the floor, I use a five bar diamond plate across the entire floor that I riveted uh, straight to the chromoly tube frame chassis so it is very solid. And one of my favorite features of the car is actually the heads up display. And you can see the gauge is reflecting off of a double mirror system and you have the speedometer and everything and it's very, very cool, very futuristic. I love that, that feel.
Hey, push the car. Oh, yeah. Ta-da! Ta-da!